She said you ain't got no rhythm, Tim. Who said that? Oh. Uh, it says that we'll sing in heaven. I don't care what John Donaldson says about singing in heaven. I'm going to have a voice. Finally. Amen. All right, but turn your Bibles to uh, Romans chapter 12. It's kind of funny how we're still on chapter 12 here. We're still on chapter 12 in Revelation. Um, did everybody get the spiritual gifts? Charlotte? Rita? Susie got it today. Alright, hope you fill them out and everything. And uh, that's what we talked about a couple weeks ago. Brother John filled in for me last week because my voice was rough uh, with a cold or some kind of a crud. And. Um, and we talked uh, from, um, uh, I believe it was from 3 to 8, uh, a few weeks back, we talked about spiritual gifts and our spiritual gifts and how we are to use them in the body of Christ. And so the body of Christ, we're going to do a recap a little bit, the body of Christ, the church, must be unified. You know, we got to work like a, a well-oiled machine moving in the right direction, moving and working together what to build up the kingdom of God. We are to, we are, we are to be out there witnessing and, and uh, bring, inviting people to come into the church and, and, uh, and serving people and helping those in need. Um, Acts 2.44 says, All that believed were together and had all things in common. We need to be like an Acts 2 church. We need to be like them. They were on fire for the Lord. They were on fire. Uh, we must be humble and not puffed up with pride. Yes. Proverbs 22, 4 says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Yes. And the next point we had a couple weeks ago, the body of Christ is unity in diversity. Um, and so we all don't have the same gifts. Uh, when, you take, when you take that spiritual gifts, and, you know, and we need to use our spiritual gifts to edify the body of Christ. We don't all have the same gifts. It's just like football players. There's like 53 um, uh, uh, football players on a roster, you know, especially at the Super Bowl a few weeks back. And um, uh, not all of them are qualified to be a quarterback. You know, not all of them are qualified to be a running back. When I played football, I was a wide receiver, as big as I am. Yes, I was a wide receiver. You know, because I had hands that, that just attracted the ball. You know, I mean, I remember anything for a 60-yard touchdown one time. I don't want nobody to hurt me. I ran. First thing was, I was surprised I had the ball. Better get going. But, um, but you know, and so, and same with our body, you know, each cell is different in what it does. Now, every, every cell does the exact same thing. Our red blood cells bring oxygen to the, the, the other cells, and uh, brings nutrients, and then, and then also brings out the carbon um, dioxide and, 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 um, and stuff like that. And, and so, it, it, and then the white blood cells, what, fight germs and bacteria and and stuff like that. So each cell and everything in our body does different things and have different jobs to do to make the body alive. But then there is some of those cells in our body that just, um, it, 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 it takes things, but it doesn't give anything back in return. You know, it, it lives off the body, it doesn't hurt the body or anything, like our fat cells, you know. I mean, it just collects and lays there. You notice this. And then, then there's the malignant cells. You know, they're the ones that attack the body, and then they, you know, and the same thing in the church. You got the ones that that just sit there and don't do anything, and they, they take from the body, they take from the blessings of the body, but they don't give anything back to the body. And then you have the malignant ones that cause the gossip, the strife, and, 
and all that kind of stuff in the church and causes dissensions and stuff like that. And so we talked about all of that um, last week. In 1 Corinthians 10, 17 says, For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are partakers of the one bread. Um, and then we talked about the last point I had a couple weeks ago. The body of Christ works together to build the kingdom of God. And um, having the gifts differing according to the grace that is given, when we are saved, we are given gifts for the edifying of the body of Christ, given by His grace to us, the free gift. Here's your gift. Now use it to glorify me. You know, use it to edify the church body. You know, use it to um, to bring in folks, to reach. You know, and, and you know, the, the hands. We are the the, the 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 hands and the feet of Jesus here on this earth. We are to help those in need. We are to, 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 to reach people for Christ. Um, gifts, charisma, a favor with which one receives without any merit of his own grace or gifts, denoting extraordinary <coughs> powers, distinguishing certain Christians, and enabling them to serve the church of Christ. And of course, um, we, we talked about the ones that are here listed as prophecy, service, teaching, exhortation, giving, leadership, and mercy. And the other gifts in scriptures is administration, knowledge, wisdom, discernment, shepherding, faith, evangelism, apostleship, and hospitality. And they're all in, in your list there with the scriptures and everything there. So take those tests if you haven't taken it and see what your spiritual gift is and use it to glorify God in the body of Christ. Okay. And now, so today we're going to be talking uh, from... Um, from um, verse 9 to 13. <laughs> All right, a few verses here. Um, and the title of the message is Love the Church Family. And I know Yellow Branch Baptist Church is a loving church. I mean, you proved that to us, you know, through the sickness that we had, I mean, you know, and, and dropping off food and, and soup and, 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 um, and other things, you know, and medicine and, and stuff and calls and and just praying for us and checking in on us and yeah. saying, hey, Pastor, are you still alive? Yeah. You know, are you still breathing? Yeah. You know, and how's your mom? And um, mom really appreciated the calls. And yeah. I mean, it was like, you know, they were telling people not to even go over there because of the, the flu epidemic and stuff and, and pneumonia and everything else. I mean, it was just, you know, even children 18 and under were not, you know, not supposed to be up there. But, well, John and I were over there in the cafeteria. There was a mother with a baby. You know, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a little baby. We're not talking about one or two or three. And, and in, in flu central, you know, and it's it, it's terrible. With you, but it is it is uh, it was rough this year and still is over there. Um, but we do thank you so much for that. But um, anyway, we're we're talking today. So let's take a look at verses um, nine through thirteen. It says, "Let love be without dissimulation." Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continually instant in prayer, distributing to the necessities of the saints given to hospitality. That's what we're going to be covering today. You know, in the church, and that's what we're talking about today, we are to behave like Christians. And next week, we're going to be talking about outside the church, uh, Romans uh, 12, 14 through 21. And, uh, and we are to share the love of Christ outside these walls. Well, inside too, but outside we are to show the love of Christ and reaching people for Jesus Christ. Um, and talking to people about, you know, we are to share the hope that is in us. You know, and, and you know, there's so many uh, that are lost, and so many are hurting, and so many don't know where to turn to. Don't know where to look. You know, they have no hope. Their hope is in their Xbox. Their hope is in their car, their, 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 their house, their money. But you know, that can be taken away just like that. One fire can take away your house. Boom. You know, we are not to hold on to material things. And our cars can let us down, too, and it has many times. You know, driving down the road, and all of a sudden, poof, there goes your tire. You know, there you are off the side of the road. 
You know, and, oh, by the way, honey, uh, we need an oil change. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to get your $2.10 paper. <laughs> That's a Sunday paper, two dollars and ten cents, almost four of me. Lays is two dollars and ten cents. I said, "Who? Huh? <laughs> what happened to seventy-five cents? That's a Sunday paper, right? Twenty-five cents for a normal paper, right? Where have I been?" <laughs> But we are to love like Jesus. Charles Spurgeon says this, How sweet it is to learn the Savior's love when nobody else loves us. When friends flee, what a blessing thing it is to see that the Savior does not forsake us, but still keeps us and holds us fast and clings to us and will not let us go. Will not let us go. I mean, friends do fail us. And, uh, you know, even uh, companies, fail us. You know, we put all of our life work into it and everything, and then when it's time to retire, they give you the good boot. You know, a lot of Christian places do that too, don't they? They have no no cares about the people or whatever it is. I'm sad to say, but they give you the boot. But anyways, Jesus commanded us to love like he loves us. John 13, 34, 35 says, The new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Yes. You know? And by this, what? Yes. They will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Yes. They will know that you are my disciples. Yes. It is love the show, you know, true love, agape love, that shows that we are truly Christ. That we are truly Christ. So we are to love the church family. And so the first point, I only got a couple points today, but the first point is love each other with a pure, sincere love. Agape love. You know, because it says, let love be without dissimulation. Well, agape love is that true sacrificial love that Christ had for us. Even that he demonstrated his own love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We were spitting at him and hating him and beating him and everything else, and he died for us. The first words he said was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Agape love, sacrificial love. It's the same kind of love that a husband is supposed to have for the wife. Sacrificial love. If you give her 100% and she gives you 100%, that's a perfect marriage, right? Does that happen in marriages today? No. A lot of selfishness going on. I catch myself a lot of times. You know, buying my wife Charles Spurgeon on her birthday. <laughs> Saying I love you. <coughs> she says, honey, this wasn't really for me, was it? <laughs> Can I borrow it? <laughs> well, you know, it's the same word here, love, is, is used in 1 Corinthians 13. Let's take a look real quick at 1 Corinthians 1 through 13. <coughs> And a lot of people use this in marriages because it is called the love chapter. Though I speak with tongues of men, of angels, and have no, not charity. Now, King James uses the word charity. Again, sacrificial. Okay? But I, I looked it up. Well, that love and the love that we're talking about here is the exact same word in the Greek, agape. I am become as sounding brass or a tingling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Charity suffer long and is kind. Charity is envious not. Charity Vaunted not itself, it is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, 
is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopes all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there is prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there is tongues, they shall see. Whether there is knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. When that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall be known, even as also I am known. And now abideth in faith, hope, charity, these three things. But the greatest of these is charity, is love. That's what's going to carry us through, is God's love, because God is love. You know, and so we become Christians. We now understand true love. We understand agape love. Before, we might, might have affections and we might say, Oh, I love you, I love you. I mean, men have a different way of showing I love you, I love you. When they want something. And, and so when we look at that love, agape, unconditional love, then we look at dissimulation. What is dissimulation? But it means hypocrisy. Without hypocrisy, without being a hypocrite, what is a hypocrite? It's play acting. It's in disguise. It's saying what you aren't, or saying that you are what you aren't. You know, like me saying that I'm a great singer, that I sound like Elvis Presley. You know. And, and things like that, but you know, you know that would be hypocrisy, wouldn't it? You know, because you know, when I sing, I sang for Brenda the other day, and she's, oh, that was awful. That was awful. <laughs> no, first she said, please stop. Oh yeah, please stop. <laughs> she said, she says you're killing. Me. He was amazing grace. Yeah. He said I was killing. Yeah. But. <laughs> I thought I was an Andre. He was modeled. No, I thought I was Andre. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to write to and tell him that. <laughs> you did good. I'm just kidding. I know. But anyway, but it means that a person does not just say, I love you, but he actually loves. Amen. Without hypocrisy. A lot of people say, I love you, but their actions speak louder than the words, That's don't right. they? And I know the church loves us because of what all the calls and all the, the things that were dropped off of the, you know, and that was that was love in action. Yes. That was a God pay love, unconditional love, sacrificial love. That's way going out of your way and, and getting things and, and, and dropping it off and, and stuff. That, that's unconditional love. And so the believer uh, must never pretend to be hypocritical. You know, we are to love you know, a true love to one another. True love one another. Without any impure um, gains or motives behind that love. I mean, our children are famous for that, aren't they? Oh, I, they call you up after six months and say, Hey, Mom! Hey, Dad! I love you! Yeah. Oh, by the way, you have to have 600 bucks like a borrow. <laughs> Where were you four months ago? Yeah. You know? And so a lot of times when we say, I love you, I love you, you know, a lot of times it's just words some people say. That's right. But, but we need to true, because love is action. Love is agape. Love is unconditional love. God's love. Um, 1 Peter 4, 8 says, Above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. A multitude of sins. Of sin. John 15, 12 and 13 says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. <laughs> Greater love has no man than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. That is true love, is giving yourself to someone else. Yeah. You know, total sacrificial love. And we I always use that in, in wedding counseling. 
and those who've heard it, you know, we, we talk about the different types of love. There's the phileo love, the more friendly love. There's the eros love, which a lot of men have that. That's, your, that's where you get the erotic from, eros, you know. It's the looks and the wow, 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 you know. And like the cartoon with the tongue rolls down, rolls back, you know, boyer, 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 the eyeballs, you know. That's the erotic love, eros, love. And a lot of teenagers today have that type of love in the backseat of cars and all this and that. But, you know, and then when the woman really needs them because of something else happens, then what do they do? They run, they bail. They got what they wanted, and they left. And they left. That's ero eros love. But agape love is true love, uh, unconditional love. And it says to abhor that which is evil. What does it mean to abhor? Abhor. It, it is to detest, to hate, to loathe. It's the horror of it. To, you know, to hate. We are to hate sin. There's so many people roll around in it today. We are to, to hate the dirty jokes. The filthy stuff. Yes. The things that are on TV and the things that are on, you know, I mean, you know, uh, TV is saturated, the commercials especially, is saturated yes, is. with eros. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yes, it is. You know, we know that that a girl in a, in a beautiful bikini and everything doesn't come with a 12 thing of donuts. <laughs> or the biker magazines, or the cars, right? How many of you look at car magazines? Is there a guy there standing there holding it with the car? What is, what is there? <laughs> What's there? I know what we're cleaning out today. You know? <laughs> Girls in their bikinis and stuff. You know that they don't come with the car. But it's what entices yes. people. It what, it's what sells. You know, your, your eye catches on her first. Then go and look and say, oh, nice car. Makes you interested. Yes. Same with biker magazines and all this and that. And it is because it's what sells. But we are to abhor that kind of stuff, that kind of behavior. We are to abhor. The believer is to love by hating evil. To abhor is strong version. It means to hate with intense feeling, to loathe, to look upon with horror. Look around with horror. And we are to hate, you know, poverty and, and, and hunger and hurt and pain, drunkenness and drugs and, and cursing, all this stuff. I mean, you know, I even have to sometimes, you know, on Facebook and stuff, I have to, you know, language, you know, yes. there's children on here too, language, yes. you know, I know there's more in your vocabulary than that word. Yes. <laughs> now, come on now, you have a 12, a, a, you know, great education and everything, let's, let's use it, but it's use, you know. And, uh, and so we have to, you know, cursing and bitterness, disease and suffering. Um, what happened? Uh-oh. No. The, uh, I bet you the, uh, did you hit that? But I bet you that someone used the bathroom and the water thing. It broke the, sh it hit the breaker, John. Check the breaker. Mm -hmm. Here? Yeah, I bet you the breaker to that 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 hot water pump when it turns on and on for a long time, it's on this whole system. And it, the electrician was supposed to take a look at it, but we see that that has it messed up. Thanks. And then it says to cleave to which is good. To cleave. What does it mean to cleave? <laughs> Hold on to. Hold on to. And, and to cleave, the word is kolola. It means to glue. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Bondage. Stick together. Hold on to. It is the same word, I looked it up, Matthew 19.5. A man shall leave his mother and father and shall cleave to his wife. It means to be glued together. Stuck. And we are to cleave to which is that good. 
to abhor evil, but to cling, to cling to, to hold on to, which is good. And, and um, <clears throat> where am I? Again? Oh yeah. And then it says, abstain from all uh, appearances of, or we are to abstain from all appearances of evil. First Thessalonians 5:22. He is to cleave to good and to work for everyone to know and experience the good. And so we are, it says we are to be kindly and affectionate to one another in brotherly love. Brotherly love. And so um, we are to cleave to that which is good, be kindly and affectionate to one another in brotherly love. And we are to love each other by being kind and affectionate to one another. And I know Yellow Branch is like that. Again, with all the calls, with all the food. I mean, you know, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir here, you know, because you know you are loving and affectionate. And and so um, in Second Corinthians six seventeen through eighteen says, therefore come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. You know, so we are, uh, you know, brotherly love. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are adopted brothers, and we are adopted children of God. Remember, back to the tree again. We are grafted in, right? Into the tree. And so we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are family. I feel like right now we should just get up and say, we are family. You know? How many know that song? I'm kind of dates myself. <laughs> um, but Galatians 4, 6, uh, uh, 4, 4 through 6 says, But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of the Son into your heart, hearts, crying, Abba, Father. We have the same Father. You know, God Almighty is our Father. Yes, He is. He is our Father. He loves us like His children. And the last point I want to make today is we need to love to serve the Lord and each other. Yes. We need to serve the Lord and each other. With these spiritual gifts, we serve the Lord and we serve each other. We edify. What does it mean to edify? It means to build up. It means to build up the church of God. And by building up this church, then we're also building up the kingdom of God. One time I had a person and, and they, they belonged to another church when I was witnessing to them and everything. And I said, well, that's great. Great. I said, I don't want to swap sheep. You know, I'm trying, you know, and, and I don't care what church you go to, because my whole thing is I don't want to get you on the church roll, I want to get you on the heavenly roll. Yeah. That's the one that matters. The heavenly roll matters. Yeah. Not the church roll. There's something on the church roll that, that, well, you know, and some churches, there's some on the church roll that's been there for years and years and years and years and years, even as a child, but their life doesn't show that they are Christ's. And it's sad to say. So there's a lot like that in today's society. And then it says, um, we are not to be slothful in business. We are to be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. What does it mean to be slothful? Slow, lazy. It's kind of like you're going to work on Monday. Mm -hmm. Right? But then when you're leaving work, it's skip a dee doo da skip a dee day right? You're leaving work and you're heading out, right? I saw that at training school all the time. I mean, I see people, I, I just sat there and laughed. Because I always came in with a cheerful, you know, and laughing and joking and carrying on like my old normal self. And then people would be coming in, they'll be, you know, and everything. And, and, but, but let me tell you, when that clock hit, time to go, man, all you saw was zoom, zoom. Everybody was just flying out of there, you know? And <coughs> I got a big kick out of that. But what does it mean to be slothful? The word is okineros. Sluggish, slothful, backwards. Backwards. And how many of you ever seen a sloth? Yes. I've seen a sloth up personal when I was in Panama. They're all over the place, right? I thought I was a guy at first doing a low crawl. <laughs> what in the world is he over there doing a low crawl? There's nobody around over here. What? Oh. They move very slow. Yeah, they, they 
was, but he was on the other like this. Yeah. But it looked like a guy doing a low crawl from the, where I was sitting. <laughs> What in the world is he doing way out there doing a low crawl? <laughs> but it was a slog. That was my first uh, thing of a, you know, being a slog. Business, and this went through me, business, spow, a uh, spude. It means haste with haste, earnestness in accomplishing, promoting, or striving after anything to give all diligence, interest, oneself most earnestly, eagerly. That's like if you own a business, your whole self is into that business, right? And your whole business is to what? Make money, right? Yeah. To sell and, to, and, and produce and whatever. But you put your whole self into it. And that's what it's saying here. Yeah. You know, that it, you, you put your whole self, that's how we are to be with the Lord. Putting our whole self yeah. into it. We are, should, should not be slothful in business. I mean, we, we, we should be um, fervent, you know, and that's where the next word comes in, be fervent in spirit. The word fervent is uh, zeo, means to be hot, to boil, to set a flame. It's kind of like reminds me of the old coal engines. Remember the trains back in the day? You took the coal and you shoved it in the, the engines and everything, and got it real hot, and then the, the hotter it got, the faster the engine went, right? Right? And that's how we are to be. Hot on fire. Whoosh. Flaming for the Lord. Right? That's right. Excited about who we are in Christ. And so we are to be, um, um, with, do it with haste. We, we need to be on fire. We must serve the Lord with all diligence, zeal, and earnest, earnestness. We must be enthusiastic in our service to Him. Enthusiastic, excited, yippee! All right, right y'all want a million dollars? Got one excited over there. All right, y'all get a million dollars. That's how we're supposed to be, right? Excited, eagerness, a fire for the Lord, serving Him diligently, on fire. For him. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 14, 12 says, Even so, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Yeah. To excel. Yeah. Serve the Lord. The idea is that we are to be focused upon the Lord in all that we do. And our jobs. We're serving the <laughs> Lord. You know, we're treating people with respect and dignity. And when the time, you know, share the gospel with them. Um, and so, um, for uh, Colossians 3, 23, 24 says, And whatever you do, do it heartily yeah. as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Who do you serve? Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. It's Him that we serve. Yeah. It's Him that we live for. He died for us. He gave His life for us. Amen. And when we're saved, now we want to serve Him. Look at Billy Graham. All these years when he got saved, he got radically saved. Amen. God called him to be an evangelist. He tried the pastor bit, and that wasn't for him. And he went out and looked at the millions and millions and millions of people he reached Jesus for Jesus Christ. All over country, he was breaking down the barrier of race yeah. and everything. He was, he was in the fields fighting yeah. you know, for Jesus Christ, witnessing. In some countries, I mean, even having a translator, he spoke and they translated their language. Yeah. I don't know if I trust anybody like that. They could be saying anything, something, something bad, you know. I'm saying something, they're saying something off the wall to get somebody mad at you. But, you know, it, but the Lord blessed it, and look at the millions that came to know Christ all throughout the whole world. Yes. I mean, he, you know, but now God's going to have raise up, he called Billy home. Now he's going to raise up another to serve in his place until Christ comes back. Yes. I always thought um, Billy Graham would, you know, wouldn't die, but he'd just see the rapture. You know? But I was wrong. And then the uh, other thing is that we, the believer, is to endure trials. Let's take a look here. Um, 
It says, rejoicing in hope, patience, and tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. We are to rejoice in hope. What is our hope? What is Christ Jesus? We know who holds our tomorrows. We know that, you know, anything can go away in our life. Anything can, you know, there could be circumstances that come up, but we have hope in Jesus Christ that he's going to see us through. And sometimes he pulls us out of that trial, but sometimes he lets us go through that trial. And when we go through that trial, we come out a better Christian. Yes. And, and, and more mature Christian. And so the Lord is always there with us in our hope. we got to rejoice in that hope. The hope in Him. The hope in Him. Um, Titus 2, 12-13 says, Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking at the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's who our hope is in. And we need to rejoice in that hope. Rejoice in that hope. And we need to be patient in tribulation because we are going to endure trials. And Satan is going to be on the, on the forefront. He's going to attack us. The demons are going to attack us. Sometimes we're going to feel like we're knocked down, beat up. You know, but God is always there and he pulls us up. I mean, we, we, we went through a rough battle the last couple of weeks, but... Prayer, prayer, and that goes to our um, patience should continue instantly in what? Prayer. See how it goes from trials and prayer? You can always be in prayer. Prayer is our communication to God. Prayer is our lifeline. Prayer is our, you know, it is the first cell phone. Yes. It's the first phone. I mean, yes. You know, we, we, we offer prayer. You know, and we're always on our knees in prayer. And it says continually, instant in prayer. You know, and it says right here, um, continuing instant in prayer. Always be in prayer. Continually, continually um, in prayer. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 7, 16 says what? Pray without ceasing. Without ceasing. Always in prayer. You know, and God is always listening. He's always there. And, and the next last point is the believers to give generously. You know, it says distributing the, to the necessary of the saints, given to what? Hospitality. We are to, you know, have our brothers and sisters over for dinner. You know, given, you know, somebody, um, an, another brother or sister over in another country is coming over as a missionary, you open your house to them. Have them stay there for a while. You know, opening your house. To our brothers and sisters in Christ, um, and we believers, all believers must open their doors, even to strangers in need. Uh, that's a scary situation. It sounds, you know. I remember one time I was taking one that colonial hotel was over there. I was taking a gentleman over there. Of course, my wife, you know, she's a worry ward, and and, and uh, she says, you know, because he didn't look right and stuff, and and she was, you know, but I was trusting in God, you know, and I was. I'm going to take him over there, so I got in my van, had my van at that time, and guy, he got in the van and everything, and then all of a sudden I heard the side door open <coughs> and close. I looked back there, and there was an elephant. I said, what are you doing? He says, <clears throat> Mama D sent me over here to protect you. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought him over there. We, we, the church put him up in the hotel and everything, and, and, but we are, because, you know, by, you know, um, doing this, we could you'd be doing, you know, entertaining what? Angels. We never know. We never know. Um, um, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Hebrews 13, 12, uh, 2. All believers must use hospitality as a means of minister and use it without grumbling. Grumbling. We, we, we as believers are not to just help the believers and unbelievers that come across our path but to look for opportunities to help. Help those in need. Open our homes, open our cupboards, open our doors, you know, to them, and to help them in need. And so, as we close here, we are to love each other with a pure, sincere love. And we are to love to serve the Lord and others. 
And if you are not saved, you do not know that what, if you're not saved, you don't know what agape love is, that true sacrificial love that only Christ can give. Only Christ can give that sacrificial love. And so, you know, he, he came, he died, he was beaten for you and for me. He took our penalty upon himself. And if you don't know Christ, and you reject Jesus Christ, then you're going to have to pay your debt on your own, and that's in hell for eternity. And I ask you to come to Christ today. He loves you. He wants to save you. Peter tells us that he doesn't want none of us, you know, to perish, but come to repentance. To repent of your sins today and turn to Him, to Jesus Christ, and serve Him. It's a life worth living. For the Savior. Yes. As we sing our last hymn, Rock of Ages. 342. I got it up here. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rock of Ages. Oh. Yeah. Oh no. These TVs have a mind of their own.